Hello mga Amisay! Good morning sa inyong lahat and welcome back to Attorney JMF Live. Wait. Welcome back to Attorney JMF Live. Okay, my name is Jinky M. Mazo and I am your lecturer for today. So mga Amisay, kung ikaw ay bago sa channel na ito, please click the subscribe button below and hit the notification bell para lagi kayong updated every time na mag upload kami ng mga bagong videos. So, dapat continuation na lang tayo ng ating rasyo sa inyong CBI Mac Board Exam. But, unfortunately, yung outcome nung, nung nakaraang live video ko, nung nakaraan, ay hindi maganda, no? Uh, nagpuputol-putol po. So, hindi pa tapos yung explanation ay nag i agad. Uh, due to poor internet connection. So, napansin nyo din siguro yun, yung mga nakapanood nung nakaraan, napansin nyo din siguro yon So, ang tendency, malilito lang kayo. So, sa halip na matuto kayo, nalito pa kayo. Okay? By the way, it doesn't matter kasi uulitin natin yan. Yes, uulitin po natin yan. And nabanggit na rin naman sa inyo ni attorney. So, mga alisay, para sa inyo po ito. No? So, hopefully, very strong na yung internet connection natin. Um, kasing strong ng relationship nyo. Sana all. And, bale, ngayong morning, ang ating ira-ratio ay numbers 1 to 50. Then, mamayang hapon, 2 p.m., ira-ratio natin yung, ikukontinue natin yung numbers 51 to 100. Alright? Um, shout out nga pala sa Team Violet. Meron na bang Team Violet dyan? Kaway-kaway, mga Team Violet. Okay, wala pa. Siguro ay tulog pa. <clears throat> team Blue. Meron na ba? Team Black. Shout out din sa Team Green. Um, team Gray. Team Yellow. And Team Red. So, nabanggit ko ba lahat ng team? Okay. So, mga amis, ay announcement nga pala, no? Um, sa June 25 and 26, si Sir Enrique Agtarap, um, mag-lecture siya sa Leia, no? 2 p.m. po. 2 p.m. June 25 and June 26, 2 p.m. mag-lecture si Sir Enrique Agtarap. Ang tunay na pagdai. Then, every day, may quiz tayo sa except Sunday po. Okay? And then, ilarasyo naman yan ni Sir... Ano ba siya? Mayaw, no? Sa July. Okay, wait. I mean, sorry, sorry guys. Mga, sorry mga amisay. Sa July 2, ang board exam trial nyo sa Lega. Then, ilarasyo po yan ni Airport Police Officer 1... John Aldrin Mayaw. Okay? So, nga pala mga amisay, bago tayo mag-sell kasi sa pag-review, um, tinatamad tayong magbasa or mag-review, no? Tinat minsan tinatamad tayong magbasa o mag-review. So, may time talaga na ganun. Ang gawin nyo lang, isipin nyo yung mga bagay na makakapag-motivate sa inyo. Isipin nyo, Tanungin niyo mga sarili niyo, para kanino ba to? Para saan ba to? Para sa pamilya mo, para sa magulang mo, para sa mga taong kumukpok sa iyo, para <clears throat> so, isipin mo yung mga paghihirap mo nung mga panahon na pinagsasabay mo yung pag-aaral mo at pagtatrabaho mo. 
para sa pangarap mo to. So, isipin mo yon And isipin mo rin yung mga taong dinadown ka. Kasi mahina ka, kasi wala kang kwenta. Isipin mo sila, hindi para magtayo ng galit. Isipin mo sila, at gawin mo silang inspirasyon. Okay? So, ikaw, yes, ikaw, kung gusto mo matuto, um, just stay with me until the end of this video. So, handa na ba kayo mga amsay? Okay, handa na ba? Okay, maghintay-hintay muna tayo ng ilang sandali bago tayo mag-umpisa. Ay, shoutout nga pala kay Alan Olave and kay Alvin Nipomo. Sino? Okay. Good morning sa inyo mga amisay. <clears throat> So, pwede na tayo siguro mag-start. Pwede na tayo mag-start. Good morning, Jeffrey. Jeffrey Porto. Good morning din sa iyo. Wait lang tayo ha, kasi inaayos pa. Naglo-loading ba mga amisay? So, hindi naman. Okay, question number one. All of the following statements are false except A. RA9165 did not remove the distinction between regulated and prohibited drugs. So, ang tahanapin natin dito yung tama, okay? So, lahat ng nasa pagpipilian ay mali. Okay, basahin ulit natin. RA9165 did not remove the distinction. False. Sa RA9165, tinanggal na po yan. Lahat ng drugs sa RA9165 are categorized as dangerous drugs. So, wala na pong regulated. Pero sa lumang batas na RA 6425, merong regulated. Okay, next, B. C, RA 9165 define regulated drugs as dangerous drugs. True or false? False. Kasi ulitin ko, lahat ng drugs ayon sa RA 9165, the first dangerous drugs from prohibited drugs. True or false? False. It must be RA6425, not RA9165. So, ang tamang sagot ay letter B. RA9165 gives a single definition of dangerous drugs. So, i-compare natin to. Kasi meron pagbabago dun sa nung, simula nung maripil yung RA6425, no? I-compare natin yung RA9165. So, RA6425, Dangerous Drugs Act of 1972 and RA9165, Comprehensive Dangerous Drugs Act which repealed RA6425. So number 1 sa RA 9166 sorry sa RA 6425 dangerous drugs are categorized as regulated and prohibited sa RA 6425 yan then as dangerous drugs Next sa number 2 sa RA 6425 accused can avail parole pardon and probation then sa RA 9165 These privileges are contained. Ibig sabihin, binawasan or di kaya ay nilimitahan na kung sino yung mga pwedeng mag-apply. Okay, for example, probation. Hindi makakapag-avail ng probation yung mga nag-violate ng RA 9165 as a general rule. Maliban na lamang kung ang nag-violate, na-violate nila ay Section 12, Possession of Paraphernalia. Section 14, possession of paraphernalia during 
social gatherings. Section 17, failure to maintain and keep original records of, of transaction on dangerous drugs. Section 57, user na nag-voluntary surrender. And section 70, first-time minor offenders. Okay, in section 12, 14, 17, 57, and 70, pwede sila mag-apply ng probation. Kasi ang penalty lamang ng mga ito ay 6 months and 1 day to 4 years. Kasi ang qualified na mag-apply ng probation ay may penalty na 6 years and below, di ba? So, hindi na pwede sila yung may 6 years. Ang penalty ay 6 years, above 6 years, 64, 25 the accused can still avail of parole, pardon, and probation. While under R.A. 9165, these privileges are curtailed. Next, number three, sa R.A. 6425, planting of evidence as a violation applies only to law enforcers. Samantala, sa RA 9165, it can be applied to any person. So, kahit sino, pwedeng um, kaparusahan ng planting of evidence. Okay, next sa number 4, RA 6425, penalties are lower. Then, sa RA 9165, penalties has increased. Next, sa RA 6425, quantity and quality of drugs is considered in the imposition of penalties. Quantity, ito yung bigat o dami. While yung quality, ito naman yung class or yung purity. Like, for example, yung shabu, may halong tawas. So, hindi siya pure na tawas. Hindi siya 100% pure na shabu. Sorry. Hindi siya baba lang ang quality niya. Kung halimbawa, mat bawa, mataas yung quantity, pero mababa naman yung quality, mababa lang ang penalty nun. Kung halimbawa naman na mababa yung quantity, pero mataas naman ang quality, mas mataas ang penalty nun. Nakukuha niyo po ba, mga amisay? Okay. Sa RA 9165 naman, Quantity is only considered as basis for the imposition of penalty. Ibig sabihin, wala nang pake sa quality. Quantity lamang ang tinitingnan. Next, sa RA 6425, procedures after arrest and confiscation of drugs does not involve other personalities. Ibig sabihin, walang witness pag nagkakandak ng confiscation. Samantalang sa RA 9165, it requires the presence of other personalities. Next, sa RA 6425, destruction of drugs is done in bulk. Ibig sabihin, iipunin muna bago sisirain or susunugin yung drugs. Samantala sa RA 9165, destruction procedures happens immediately. So after po mag ng criminal case involving drugs, ang korte ay magkakandak ng tinatawag na ocular inspection ng confiscated drugs within 72 hours po. Okay? And thereafter, with, within 24 hours, the PIDEA shall proceed with the destruction or burning of the said dangerous drugs. Siyempre, hindi yan susunugin ng sila lamang. Dapat susunugin nila yung confiscated drugs in the presence of the Air Council, a representative from media and the DOJ, and any elected public official. Kasi, hindi mo naman masalita. A person who is applying for professional driver's license is required to undergo mandatory drug testing. A true, B false, C yes, D no. 
Ang sagot po dito mga amis ay, ay letter B. False. Ang mandatory drug testing for the application and the renewal of driver's license is no longer required as provided under Section 36, Paragraph A of RA 9165 or the Comprehensive Dangerous Drugs. Si 13 pa po tinanggal yung mandatory drug testing para sa mga mag a apply ng driver's license. Okay? So, number two, ang sagot ay false. Next number. Number three, you are an investigator investigating a suspected, suspected rape slaying case which was allegedly witnessed by a certain person who volunteered to identify and testify against the perpetrator. Which of the following factors you should not consider to determine the accuracy of identification of the suspect? A. The prevailing condition is think appearance of the suspect. So, ang tinatanong mga amis ay, ay yung hindi kabilang sa mga factors na dapat i-consider para alamin yung accuracy o kung tama ba yung identification ng witness sa suspect. So, ang sagot po dito mga amis ay, ay letter C. Is state of mind when he witnessed the commission of crime. Dahil yan po ay isa sa mga factors in determining the credibility of the witness in identifying the suspect. So the rest, A, B, and D, yan po yung mga factors to be considered in determining the accuracy of the identification of the suspect. By the way, ano pa ba ang mga factors na tinitingnan para malaman yung credibility ng witness sa pag-identify niya sa suspect? Pag sinabi nat, kasi natin credibility, mapaniniwalaan or kapanipaniwala. So isa na nga yung letter C. His state of, state of mind, tumutukoy po yan sa katinuan or pag-iisip ng tao. Meaning, dapat nasa katinuan siya nung masaksihan niya ang krimen. So the witness must not under the influence of alcohol or drugs. Kasi pwede ito makaapekto sa kanyang pag-iisip kung siya nakainom or nakadrag. Evaluate the credibility of the witness is his or her consciousness to the time the event took place. So, dapat aware siya or nauunawaan niya yung mga nangyari ng mga oras kung saan naganap ang krimen. And lastly, the capability of the witness to understand the obligation to tell the truth. Okay? Again, Factors in determining the credibility of the witness in identifying number one, his state of mind when he witnessed the commission of crime. Number two, his or her consciousness to the time the event took place. And number three, his or her capability to understand the obligation to tell the truth. Okay, next number. <clears throat> Luisa told to the police that the night when the body of Angel was found dead, she saw Vincent running away from the house carrying a knife. What kind of evidence will be the testimony of Luisa? Circumstantial evidence and letter D, direct evidence. So meron three kinds of physical evidence. A, T. C stands for corpus delicti. Corpus delicti is a Latin term which means the body of the crime. So, Lili nawin ko lamang mga amisay, yung salitang body dito ay hindi lamang po tumutukoy sa possible corpse o dead body. Again, Yung salitang body ay hindi lamang tumutukoy sa possible corpse o dead body. Okay? Yes. Pag sinabi kasi nating body of the crime or corpus delicti is the body of the crime. It is referring to the 
facts or circumstances which will prove that there was an injury or loss sustained. Like for example, in arson cases, before a person can be tried, dapat mayroong property na nasunog. At dapat, balikin natin, number four, Luisa told to the police that the night when the body of Angel was found dead, she saw Vincent running away from the house carrying what kind of evidence will be the testimony of A. Tracing evidence B. Associate evidence C. Circumstantial evidence and letter D. Direct evidence So merong three kinds of physical evidence Ang ating mnemonics ay CAT C. A. T. C. stands for Corpus Delicti. Corpus Delicti is a Latin term which means body dito ay hindi lamang po tumutukoy sa past corpse o dead body. But actually, tumutukoy po ito to any form of evidence. Pag sinabi kasi natin body of the crime, it is referring to the facts or circumstances which will prove that there was an injury or loss sustained. Like for example, in arson cases, before a person can be tried, dapat mayroong property na nasunog. At dapat mapatunayan na may criminal act na nagresulta sa pagkasunog ng nasabing property. So ang corpus delicti po dito ay yung property na nasunog. Another example, in theft cases, no? dapat mayroong property na nawawala o ninakaw. Halimbawa, cellphone na nawawala. So, ang corpus delicti po dito ay yung stolen property which is the cellphone. Okay po? So, madaling sabi, corpus delicti ay tumutukoy sa bagay na magpapatunay na ay naganap na krimen. Ano naman yung associative act? It is a kind of physical evidence that links the suspect to the crime. Okay, example po ng associative evidence ay fingerprint na naiwan sa crime scene. So, yung fingerprint na yun ang magpapatunay na ikaw ay nandun mismo nung mga oras na naganap ang krimen. Another example is yung relo na naiwan ng suspect sa pinangyarihan ng krimen. So, dahil sa pagmamadali na tumakas, nahulog yung rilo ng suspect. No? So, yung rilo na yon ang magpapatunay na yung suspect ay nandun sa pinangyarihan ng krimen. Ibig sabihin, itong associative evidence ay tumutukoy sa bagay na belong sa suspect o di kaya ay pagmamayari ng suspect. Na kung saan yung bagay na yon ay makakatulong para ma-identify yung suspect. Next is tracing evidence. Kung ang associative evidence is used to identify the suspect, ang tracing naman is used to locate the suspect. For example, si A ay nakipagsaksakan kay B. Napatay si A si B. Ngunit, meron ding saksak si A sa kanyang kita. Sa pagtangan, ipatuloy yung pagpatak ng dugo na nanggaling nanggal sa hita niya. So, nag-iwan ng traces itong si A. Sa madaling salita, yung mga patak-patak na dugo na yon ang tinatawag nating tracing evidence na magagamit upang matrace yung suspect. Again, tracing evidence used to locate the suspect or the criminal. Another example is yung shoe print. Hindi lang basta isang shoe print. Shoe print na kung saan, matitrace mo yung daan na tinahak ng suspect. Okay? Naintindihan ba? So again, corpus delicti ay yung ebidensya Corpus delicti ay yung ebidensya na ma ay patunay na may naganap na krimen. Associative evidence, ebidensya ang magagamit upang ma-identify yung suspect. And then tracing evidence, ebidensya na magagamit upang ma-locate yung suspect. Next is, ano naman ang pinagkaiba ng circumstantial evidence 
or indirect evidence ha? Direct evidence. So yung circumstantial evidence or indirect evidence, ito yung pitag-pitag-ping evidence o pangyayari. So paano magiging sapat o sufficient yung circumstantial evidence to produce the conviction of the accused? Number one, please take note, there are more than one circumstances present. Remember that one is not enough. No? Number two, the facts from which the inferences derived are proven. So, dapat mapatunayan ng witness yung sinasabi niya. And number three, the combination of all circumstances is such to produce a conviction beyond reasonable doubt. Okay, for example, si A, pinatay niya si B. Si B isang bata, no? Samantalang habang ginagawa ni A ang pagpatay kay B, si C na isang kapitbahay ay may narinig na sigaw ng isang bata. Yung sigaw ng isang bata, parang humihingi ng tulong. Makalipas ang ilang minuto ay nakita ni C si A sa lugar malapit sa panangyarihan na tila balisa at hindi mapakali. Nakita niya rin na may bahid ng dugo sa damit nito. So makalipas ang ilang oras ay may nakita, na, may nakita si C na kahinahinalang maleta sa likod ng bakuran nila at binuksan niya ang maleta. At doon ay nakita niya ang isang bat, patay na bata. So, sa sitwasyong yon yung time na narinig ni C ang pagsigaw ng isang bata na tila humihingi ng tulong, isang circumstansya na po yan. At yung time na nakita niya si A na tila balisa at may bahay pa ng tubo, pangalawa, circumstansya. And finally, nung makita niya ang maleta na may bahay ng bata, pangatlong circumstansya. Yan ang tinatawag nating circumstantial evidence. Hindi niya direktang nakita ang naganap na krimen. Ngunit dahil sa pagpitagping pangyayari, ay nalaman nila kung sino yung possible na suspect. Maliwanag po ba? Sa makatwid, ang direct evidence naman, mga amisay, ay nakita o nasaksehan mismo yung pangyayari. Halimbawa, nakita ni ACB na ginagahasa si C. O di kaya nakita ni ACB na pinatay si C. Direct evidence po yan. Directly proves the facts, the fact in issue. So sa number question natin, anong sagot mga amisay? Letter C. Circumstantial evidence. No? Or also known as direct evidence. Okay? Next number, five. Which of the following medical evidence can show that a gunshot is homicidal? Letter A, no sign of struggle from the victim. Letter B, wounding firearms found in the, uh, the hands of the victim. C, no disturbance in the crime scene. Letter D, sight of wound entrance has no point of election. Okay, compare muna natin kung ano ba yung pinagkaiba ng suicidal and homicidal gunshot wound para mas maunawaan nyo, no? Sa suicidal, usually one shot lang. Walang magkukumit ng suicide na magbabalik muna sa pa or hita niya. Okay? Sa homicidal, more than one shot. Then sa suicidal, site of wound and transit of election. Ibig sabihin, Pili lang yung parte ng katawan ang may site of entrance wound. Yung body parts na mayroong entrance wound ay yung kaya lamang abutin ng ating mga kamay. Okay? Accessible parts only. Like chest and head. For example, um, kaliwete ka. Dapat ang site, site of entrance wound or site na may gunshot wound ay sa kaliwang bahagi din ng iyong ulo. Hindi po sa kanan. Maliba na lamang kung ikaw ay isang ambidextrous. When we say ambidextrous, um, able to use both hands equally. So, sa makatwid, 
Yung homicidal, yung site of entrance wound or gunshot wound ay walang point of election. Any body part. Ibig sabihin, walang pinipiling parte ng katawan ang pinatatamaan ng Next, sa suicidal, no defense wound or no sign of struggle. Same lang po yan. Then, sa homicidal na due to cadaveric spasm. And lastly, sa suicidal, near contact fire po yan. Ang ebidensya makikita dyan ay may sunog sa paligid ng wound. So, ang sagot dito sa number 5, which of the following medical evidence can show that a gunshot wound is homicidal? A, no sign of struggle from the victim. Homicidal ba yan? No. Suicidal po yan. Letter B, wounding firearm found in the hands of the victim. Suicide, homicidal? No. Suicidal pa rin. Letter C, no disturbance in the crime scene. Suicide, ho, homicidal ba? No. Again, suicidal. So, therefore, the answer is letter D. Sorry. Site of bond entrance has no point of election. Wait lang. Gumagalaw siya. Okay. Next number six. Number six. This is the method used to determine whether a driver is under the influence of alcoholic beverages or not. A counting, B field sobriety test, C walking through straight line, D balance. So, ang answer dito mga amis ay, ay letter B, field sobriety test. Yung, walk, yung counting, walking through straight line and balance, ginagawa lahat yan sa field sobriety test. So, ang FST ay ginagamit ng mga police officers para, sa, para ma-determine kung ang isang driver ay under the influence of alcohol or other drugs. So, ano bang ginagawa sa field sobriety test? So, meron three validated tests na ginagawa under field sobriety test. First, yung horizontal gaze. Horizontal gaze, nystagmus. This test is used to observe the, the movement of the eyes. So, paano? Meron isang bagay na kailangan sundan ng mata ng subject such as ball pen or small flashlight. Yung movement ng bagay na ay pa-horizontal. From Left to right only. Next is walk and turn test. The walk is a is directed to take nine step, touching heel to two along a straight line. So yun po yung walk and turn test. The subject is directed to take nine steps, touching heel to two. Next, pangatlo yung one leg stand test. So nakatayu yung isang paa habang yung isang paa na katas. At habang siya ay nagbibilang sa loob ng 30 seconds. Next, number 7. Following are known as G7 nations, which were mandated to devise international standards and policies to combat money laundering, except A. France, Germany, and Italy, B. Japan, C. China, United Arab Emir Emirates, D. United Kingdom of Great Britain, United States of America, and Canada. So, ano-ano mga bansa ba ang bumubuo sa G7 nations? Okay, ang G7 nations, it includes France, United Kingdom. So, dati, Fuk Jigo lang. Fuk Jigo. Kaso, may times na nakakalimutan ko kung anong, anong bansa ang kabilang dyan. Kasi, maraming bansa ang nag-start sa letter C sa U, di ba? Sa J, so nakakalito. 
Kaya yan, focus ka, jagit ang aking ginagamit. So, may papakita ko sa inyo. Actually, mga amisari, G8 sila dati. So, ang isang bansa na kabilang dito ay ang bansang Russia. So, natanggal ang Russia dahil sa annexation ng Crimea from Ukraine. So, yung Crimea, mga amisari, ay isang island na kinikilalang pagmamayari o tinuturing na pagmamayari ng bansang Ukraine na siya namang tinake control ng mga Russian troops. Kaya para sa Ukraine at sa okay. So, yun yung dahilan. Kaya natanggal lang Russia sa G8 which is now G7 because of annexation of Crimea from Ukraine. By the way, ang function ng G7 um, sila yung umaaksyon para masolusyonan yung mga global problems. Then, ang special focus nila is about economic issues. Isa na nga, isa, isa na nga yung sa money laundering. Kung saan ata sa itong saan sa utitay letter si China or United Arab Emirates and Ukraine. So, hindi sila kabilang. Again, ang bumupo sa G7 ay ang focus ka jagi. Focus ka jagi. Ayan. Monix ko dyan. Focus ka dyan. Git. At from UK, United Kingdom, United States, Mnemonix na yan. Next number. Number 8. The Yakuza is known as the most influential Japanese organization of criminals. This is organized into families which adopt a relationship called A. Kapuki Nimo, B. Uyabun Kubon, C. Imo Yamakuto, D. Bakuto. So, ang correct answer di, mga amin sa inyo, wabas ito, Uyabun Kubon, na pag sabihin ng Uyabun, sa is, ay foster father, at ang kubo naman ay foster child. Ang yaku sa mga amin sa inyo, kilala rin sa tawag na Boryu Kudan. So, mayroong five families ang Yakub. So, pakitake note kasi minsan na rin itong lumabas sa board exam. Ang number one is Yamaguchi Gumi. Ang Yamaguchi Gumi is considered as the Japan's most powerful syndicate. Ang founder nito ay si Harukichi Yamaguchi. Ang Yamaguchi Gumi ang pinakamalaking family ng Yakuza. Meron itong 20,400 ang Next, ang pangalawang family ay yung Ishigatin leader ng Yamaguchi Gumi na si Hiroshi Yamamoto. Ang pangatlong family ay yung Sumi Yushikai. Ito naman yung pinaka pangalawa sa pinakamalaking family ng Yakuza with 15,000 members. Pang-apat, yung Inigawa Kai. Ito naman yung pinak pangatlo sa pinakamalaking family ng Yakuza. Ang founder naman nito ay si Kakuji Inigawa. At panghuli na family, Tau Yuai Jigyu Kumiya. Again, Tau Yuai Jigyu Kumiya. Ito naman ang pinakamaliit na family na Yakuza with 1,000 members pero kinikila ang pinakamainfluensyang family ng Yakuza. Ika nga, is but terrible. Okay? Next number. Number 9. In case there are two vehicles. Okay, ang sagot dito mga amisay ay letter A. The vehicle coming from the left shall or give the right of way to the vehicle on the right. Therefore, the vehicle coming from the right, yung letter B, shall be get, given the right of way. Siya yung bibigyan ng right of way. And then, ang magbibigay ng right of way, yung vehicle coming from the left. Again, yung vehicle coming from the left shall give the right 
of way to the vehicle on the right. And the vehicle coming from the right shall be given the right of way. The right of way. So, pag nasa left, yung sasakyan, give. Pag nasa right, given. Okay? Nangyikindihan? Next number 10. Which of the following should not be done by the fire truck driver when crossing an intersection where there is a traffic control? A. Wait for the light to change. B. Proceed only when it, when it is safe. C. Must do a full stop. D. See the traffic stop and keep. So, meron stop light sa intersection. Ano ang hindi dapat gawin ng fire truck driver? So, anong sagot niyo mga misal? Sagot kayo. Okay, kung mapapansin niyo, lahat po yan ay dapat gawin ng private vehicle. E ang tinatanong, ano ang hindi dapat gawin ng fire truck driver kapag nasa intersection na siya? So, lahat sa choices, possible maging sagot, di ba? Dapat ba tumigil siya? Hindi, di ba kasi emergency vehicle, exempted siya. Kailangan ba maghintay muna siya na bago mag-ilaw? O ba, bago siya mag-go? Hindi, dapat. Okay. So, nasa na tayo? Nasa na tayo? <clears throat> So, ang sagot dito mga amisay, ang sagot ay letter D. See the traffic stop and hit. So, hindi siya dapat mag-stop pag naka-red light. No? Kasi unang-una, fire truck is not a private vehicle. Emergency vehicle po siya. Kaya exempted siya. So, since nakita na possible lahat ng sagot, piliin natin yung pinaka- Best answer. The best answer. Next, number 11. In which part of the globe is the principal source of all forms of cocaine? A, South America is. Ang tamang sagot dito ay letter A, South America. Sa South America, ang location ng kilikilalang or kilalang silver triangle. Ilang bansa ba ang bumubuo sa silver triangle? Ilang bansa ba ang bumubuo sa silver triangle? Tatlo. Okay? Ito ay ang Pebuco. Pebuco, yan yung mnemonics. Pebuco. P stand for Peru, Bolivia, and Colombia. Peru, Bolivia, and Colombia. So, ang main drugs na pinuproduce nila ay cocaine. Pero sa tatlong yan, ang mas malakas magproduce ng cocaine ay ang Colombia. Next, sa Southwest Asia naman, dyan ang location ng isa sa mga illicit drug roads na kilalang kilala, kilala rin dahil siya ang primary source ng heroin. So, ano ito? Ito ay ang Golden Crescent. So, ang Golden Crescent ay binubuo ng apat na countries sa Southwest Asia. Ito ay ang IPA, double IPA, Iran, India, Pakistan at Afghanistan. So, anong main drugs na pinupud ang pinupudus nila? Heroin, okay? 85 to 90% ang pinupudus nila in underworld market. Paka-take note yan, 85 to 90%. So, aside from heroin, nagpuproduce din sila ng opium poppy. Next, sa Southeast Asia naman, Ano naman kaya ang meron sa Southeast Asia? So, dito matatagpaan, matatagpuan ang Golden Triangle. So, ano-ano mga bansa ang nakapalibot sa Golden Triangle? So, para madali nyo matandaan, TML. Pag may TM ka, tas niloadan mo, pwede ka na mag-ML. Ay, wale. So, TML, Thailand, Myanmar, and Laos. Laos. By the way, mga kami sa yung Myanmar, ang, ang dating tawag dyan ay Burma. 
Pero ngayon, ang tawag na po ay Myanmar. Ano naman ang major drugs na pre-produce ng Golden Triangle? Okay, opium. Op opium ang <clears throat> major drugs na pre-produce ng Golden Triangle. So, approximately 60% ng opium ang pre-produce nila world wide and 90% in Eastern part of Asia. Again, ang Golden Triangle, Golden Crescent and Silver Triangle, itong tatlong to ay ang second major drug traffic road. So para hindi niyo makalimutan, pakisulat mga misay. I mean tandaan niyo itong mnemonics na ito. Ayan. Yan yung second major traffic road. So, tandaan nyo mga nyo yan. GT, TMLCO. GT, Golden Triangle. TML, so anong bansa matatanggal sa, matatanggal sa Golden Triangle? Thailand, Myanmar. Okay, again. Anong part ng globe matatagpuan ang Golden Triangle? Sa Southeast Asia. Ano ang major drugs na pinuproduce nila? Opium. Yan. GTTMLCO. Next is Golden Crescent. Gisipaswahe. Gisipaswahe. Golden Crescent. Anong bansa ang matatagpuan sa Golden Crescent? Ano ang bansa ang binubuo ng Golden Crescent? Iran, India, Pakistan, and Afghanistan. So saan matatagpuan ang Golden Crescent sa Southwest Asia. Anong major drugs ang pinuproduce ng Golden Crescent? Okay? Heroin. Next is St. Peboko. St. Peboko. Silver Triangle. Ano-anong mga bansa ang binubuo ng Silver Triangle? Peru, Bolivia, and Colombia. Ano naman ang, ang major drugs na pinupus ng Silver Triangle? Okay. Cocaine po. Cocaine. So, yeah. Okay? Sa so first important drug traffic road, I mean, sa second major drug traffic road, merong tatlo. Dito sa first major traffic road, Apat ang tatundan nyo. So, first, sa Middle East, dyan nagumpisa ang discovery, plantation, cultivation, and harvest. So, again, Middle East, discovery, plantation, cultivation, and harvest, harvest ng drugs. So, ito yung mga natural Next, saan naman ginagawa yung preparation for distribution? Sa Turkey. Again, preparation for distribution sa Turkey po. Next, isa naman minamanufacture, synthesize, and refined chemical process yung natural drugs sa Europe. Okay? So, gagawin na nilang artificial or synthetic drugs. So, dumaan na sa chemical process itong natural drugs. After that, ano naman ang susunod? Marketing. So, ibebenta na nila, ide-distribute. So, saan nagaganap ang marketing? Marketing ng finished product sa USA. Okay, again? Ang first important drug traffic road, saan ang discovery, plantation, cultivation, and harvest ng natural drugs? Sa Middle East. How about preparation for distribution? Turkey. How about manufacture, synthesize, and refine chemical process? So, sa nagaganap yan? From natural, gagawin nilang artificial or synthetic drugs. Saan? Sa Europe. Lumabas na po ito sa board exam, pero... And finally, marketing. Sa USA. Just beaten by... Awel, friend, ninja, mosquito. As a treatment, Bravo got 
his ointment from his backpack and applied it directly on the mosquito bite while the two are having sticky and direct eye contact. What do you call the road of drug and its administration which was employed by Bravo? Okay. So topical ang tamang sagot dyan. Pag sinabing topical, it is the application of drugs directly to a body, such as the skin and the mucous membrane. So, sa madaling salita, ang topical, ito yung mga pinapahit sa skin natin. Example niyan ay cutting ko uh, BL ointment. Yan. Yan yung mga example. Next, oral ingestion. Mga common ways of taking a drug. The drug is taken by the mouth papunta sa stomach. So, ito yung mga iniinom natin na tawag dito ay oral ingestion. Okay? Taking of drugs through mouth. Next, yung suppositories. Suppositories, the drug is administered through the vagina or rectum. Yan yung suppositories. The drug is administered through the vagina or rectum. Then, yung ion, ion toporosis. As example nito ay yung ginagamit na mga physical therapies. Okay? Next number. Number 13. The heat energy derived from nuclear energy by the splitting of atoms is known as A. Fission. B. Radiation. C. Ignition. D. Fusion. So, the correct answer here, mga amisay, ay letter A, fission. Ang keyword dyan ay splitting of atoms. Then, yung fusion, opposite ito ng fission. So, ang fusion, ang keyword dyan ay joined or combined of atoms. Then, sa rad yung radiation naman, heat transfer through electromagnetic waves. Then, yung ignition, it is the act of causing something to start burning. Pagningas or paglilab. Yan yung ignition. Next, number 14. Number 15. What is the penalty imposed for possession of dangerous drug paraphernalia? A. Six months and one... Okay. C, 4 months and 1 day and a fine of 10,000 pesos. D, 6 years and 1 day to 12 years and a fine of 50 to 200,000 pesos. So, anong sagot yung mga amisay? So, ang tamang sagot dito ay letter A. 6 months and 1 day to 4 years and a fine of 50,000 pesos. So, anong section ang possession of drug paraphernalia? Section 12. Pwede ba mag-apply ng probation? Tinalakay natin to kanina, tama? Tingnan nga natin. So, ano pa maliban sa section 12 ang pwede mag-apply ng probation? Section 14. Possession of drug paraphernalia during social gatherings. Ano pa? Section 17. Section 17. Failure to Maintain and keep original records of transaction on dangerous drugs. What else? Section 57. User na nag-voluntary surrender. And finally, Section 70. First time, minor offender. Penalty yan for violation of, of Section 15, use of dangerous drugs. For first offense. Six months rehabilitation in a government center. Then, yung 6 years and 1 day to 12 years, yung letter D, um, for second offense po yan. Penalty for second offense. Okay. Pwede nyo po i-check yan sa Article 2, Unlawful Acts and Penalties ng RA 9165. Next, number 15. A promise of hope and use of force 
or intimidation, threat, or fear, and other analogous acts make confession or admission blank, therefore blank. A. Voluntary, not admissible in court. B. Involuntary, therefore not admissible in court. C. Involunt or invo C. Voluntary, therefore admissible in court. D. Involuntary, therefore inadmissible in court. So what is the answer mga amisay? Voluntary ba yan? Admissible ba? So the correct answer is letter D. Involuntary, therefore inadmissible in court. Huwag kayong sasagot ng not admissible. Inadmissible po dapat, okay? So mga amisay, bago tayo proceed sa next question, talakayan natin kung ano ang pinagkaiba ng confession na admission. Nandiyan po ba kayo? Okay, so alam natin ang confession and admission are somehow used is interchangeably. So balit sa batas, itong dalawang terms na ito ay may pagkakaiba. Okay, yung admission, isa na, okay, again, pag sinabing acknowledgement of fact, yung akasado, inaamin niya na maayon nandun siya sa pinangyarihan ng krimen. Ngunit hindi niya inaamin na siya yung gumawa ng krimen. Also, sa admission, pwede yan gawin ng third person. Maybe made by third person. Samantala, ang confession naman, it involves acknowledgement of guilt. Sa madalita, amin niya, siya mismo ang gumawa ng krimen. Again, inaamin na siya mismo ang gumawa ng krimen. So, itong confession is the most reasonable evidence for prosecuting a case. Bakit? Dahil walang tao na amin na siya ay guilty na siya ang gumawa ng krimen. Kung hindi naman, totoo. di ba? Nakuha niyo ba yung pinupunto? Okay. At isa pa, confession, pwede lang yan gawin ng akusado. Siya lang. Nakuha niyo ba ang pagkakaiba ng dalawa? Admission, Acknowledgement of facts. Admission, acknowledgement of guilt. So, meron two kinds of confession. The judicial confession and extra judicial confession. Unahin natin ang judicial confession. Unahin natin ang judicial. Judicial confession. Sa judicial confession, kapag inamin sa open court, especially during arraignment. Pag inamin sa open court, admissible ba o inadmissible? Okay. Tatanggapin o hindi tatanggapin? Admissible. Tatanggapin. Automatic yung judgment. So, magtatrial pa ba siya? Hindi na. Dadaan pa ba siya sa pre-trial? Hindi na rin. Maliban na lamang kung heinous crime yung nagawa na kahit umamin na sa korte, hindi agad nila i-judge. Next, yung extrajudicial confession. Extra, labas. So, pag-amin sa labas ng korte. Usually, during custodial investigation. So, pag-amin sa labas ng korte. Admissible or inadmissible? Inadmissible as a general rule. But remember, in every general rule, there is always an exception. So, mamaya talakay, talakayin natin yan. Again? Okay? Kailan naman masasabi na ang confession ay involuntary? Kapag may force, pamumar sa what else? Intimidation, may pinakot? Ano pa? Threat, may pagbabanta. Pwede rin pinaka, pinangakuan na bibigyan ng reward. So, umamin siya kasi pinilit, pinelsa, pinot. So, nilabag nila yung free will ng tao. So, pag involuntary ang confession, admissible ba o inadmissible? Inadmissible. E, paano naman kung voluntary, ibig sabihin, kusang loob. Kusang Admissible o inadmissible? 
So, nasa extrajudicial confession pa rin tayo, ha? Okay, pagpusan loob ng mamin, at nasa ex, at inamin niya extrajudicial confession and involuntary, inadmissible po yan. Kahit pa voluntary siya umamin, basta nasa labas, inadmissible, okay? Okay, ang tanong, yung pag-amin ba sa labas ng korte ay pwede maging admissible? Again, pag, yung pag-amin ba sa labas ng korte ay pwedeng maging admissible? Pwede. Pero papaano? In order for an extrajudicial confession to be admissible, it must be voluntary in writing and in language known to him. So, dapat nauunawaan niya. Next is taken under oath. Must be in the presence of counsel. And must be signed. So again, it must, in order for an extrajudicial confession to be admissible, it must be in voluntary, in writing, and in language known him, taken under oath, and must be in the presence of counsel, and must be signed. So alam niyo na, okay? Tayo sa next question. So ang so, ang sa 15 ay involuntary, inadmissible in court. Next, number 16. Circumstantial evidence may produce conviction if the following requisites are present, which is not. So, alin daw ang hindi kabilang? A. When the facts from which the inference are derived are proven, B. When the quantum of substantiality of evidence are proven. C. When there are more than one circumstances circumstance present. D. When the combination of all circumstances which produce a conviction beyond reasonable doubt. So, na-discuss na natin ito kanina. Ang tamang sagot dito ay letter B. Quantum, <clears throat> quantum of substantiality of evidence are when? Next number, 17. Number 17. The information coming from the underworld people such as prisoners or ex-convicts. A. Collated, B. Regulated, C. Grapevine, D. Classified. So, anong sagot yung mga amisay? Ang tamang sagot dito ay letter C. Grapevine. Ang keyword natin ay underworld people. Yung regular mga amisay, example niyan ay police record, school and school record. Motivated, Information niya na nang sa informer and informant. Pag sinabi informer, uh, sila'y nagbibigay ng information because of remuneration. So, bayad ang informer. Samantalang ang informant, kusang loob na nagbibigay ng information. So, voluntary sa makatwid, walang bayad. So, yan yung three sources of information. Great buy regular and cultivated. Next, number 18. This may be a self-incriminatory statement by the subject falling short of an acknowledgement of guilt. A. Admission Confession C. Confession B. Deposition so, anong sagot mga amisay? For sure, alam nyo na ang sagot na sinatalakay natin to kanina. What is the correct answer? Okay, ang tamang sagot ay letter A, admission. Ang keyword natin dyan ay falling short of an acknowledgement of guilt. So, hindi por... <clears throat> sorry. Hindi porket may acknowledgement of guilt ay confession na. So, tandaan niyo yan. Falling short of acknowledgement of guilt 
admission. Number 19. Which of the following statements best indicates the main purpose of traffic law enforcement? A. Control the speed limited in densely populated areas. B. Reduce traffic by punishing violated traffic rules. C. Prevent traffic accidents and expedite the flow of traffic. D. Keep traffic moving at a steady rate to avoid bottlenecks. So, lahat naman sila ay positive. Pero ang pinaka-main purpose ng traffic law enforcement is to, is to prevent traffic accidents and expedite the flow of traffic. So, letter C ang sagot. Next, number 20. The Philippine Drug Enforcement Agency is headed by a Director General assisted by two deputies and is appointed by the President. What is the highest rank in PDA? A. Under Secretary B. Director General of PDA C. Secretary D. Director Ang sagot dito ay letter A. Under Secretary Yan ang highest rank ng PDA Then ang highest position naman ng PDA ay Director General. So, baligtad, no? Sa PNP, ang Direction, Director General rank. Then sa PDEA, ang Director General position. So, ang PDEA, it is headed by Director General with the rank of Under Secretary. At sino ang nag-a-appoint? President. Okay? The Director... Okay, naputol. Ulitin ko. Director General is assisted by two deputies Director General with the rank of Assistant Secretary, one for Operation and one for Administration. PDEA also serves as an implementing arms of the DDD or the Dangerous Drugs Board. And at the same time, they do operations. So, nag investiga sila, nag a Nang, or nanguhuli ng mga violators at nagkukumpis ka ng dangerous drugs. Next, number 21. Prohibited signs and restricted signs shall have blank. Green background with white and black symbols. B. Red background, white symbol and black border. C. Blue background and white symbol. And letter D background with black symbol and red border. So, ang sagot dito ay letter D. White background with black symbol and red border. Yung blue background and with white symbol, formative signs po yan, yung letter C. Next, number 22. Twenty-two. Okay. Okay, number twenty-two. Kevin, Kevin moved the passion of jealousy against Paquito on account of his amorous relations with Nicole, Kevin's wife. Destroyed with a bolo one of the partitions of Paquito's house and burned. But as wind as then blowing in the direction of the house, this was also also burned. What crime was committed by Kevin? A. Arson with malicious mischief. B. Arson through reckless imprudence. C. Arson only. And letter D. Arson with malicious mind. So si Kevin asawa ni Nicole. Nagselos siya kay Paquito. Dahil sa pagselos niya kay Paquito, so gamit ang bol Tira niya yung isa sa mga bagay ni bahagi ng bahay ni Paquito at tunog ito. Ngunit dahil yung hangin ay papunta sa direksyon ng bahay ni Paquito, nasunog din ito. So ang sinunog lang ni Kevin ay yung sinira niyang bahagi ng bahay ni Paquito, hindi mismo yung bahay ang sinunog. So nasunog lang ito dahil tinangay ng hangin ang apoy papunta sa bahay ni Paquito. Anong crime ang nakumit ni Kevin. 
person through reckless imprudence. Okay? Reckless reckless imprudence kasi without malice. Wala siyang intensyon na mag ng harm o madama yung bahay na masunog. Okay? Next number, 23. Mountain driver died as a result of burning. It was the crime committed by Mang Kanor. It can only be murder si arson with homicide. So, mga homicide. Okay, ang tamang sagot. Okay, meron tatlong rule na dapat encounter. Kapag ang intention ay sunugin lamang, kapag ang intention ay sunugin lamang, ngunit may namatay on the occasion of arson, ang krimen ay arson lamang. Pangalawa, kapag ang in <clears throat> ang inloob ng bahay o ng isang establishment by means of fire, ang krimen ay murder. Again, kapag ang intensyon ay pamatay patayin sa pamamagitan ng opoy habang siya ay nasa isang establishment, ang krimen ay murder. At panghuli, kapag pinatay mo na at sa kanyang pagtunog, nung patay na, saka mo sinunog yung bahay, in order to counsel the to conceal the crime para itago ang krimen, sa makatwid, meron ng two separate and distinct crimes committed. So, ang krimen ay either homicide and arson or murder and arson. So, depende kung may qualifying circumstances o what. Pag may qualifying, murder. Pag wala, homicide. Arson was film forming foam, be aquatic formula forming foam, film, si aquatic film forming foam, the Aquarius film foaming form. Medyo nakakalito. So, ang sa tamang sagot dito ay letter A. Aquarius film forming foaming agent na effective gamitin sa class A fire. Ordinary. Ano ba yung class A fire? So, ano nasusunog sa class A fire? Especially sa class B fire. Kung saan ang nasusunog ay flammable liquids, gasoline, oil, kerosene. Bakit effective ang foam sa flammable liquids? Dahil ang foam ay pumipigil sa pagliliyab ng apoy to prevent re-ignition. Ano ang effective mixture ng AFFF sa water to produce foam? Ang effective mixture niyan ay 94% water and 6% foam. Okay? Next number, 25. What do you call an informant who is considered the in the criminal? So, ang sagot dito ay frightened informant. Ang keyword dyan ay weakest link. Ang frightened informant is motivated by anxiety and self-preservation of his well-being. So, nagbibigay sila ng information para maprotektahan nila ang sarili nila. Ang frightened informant ay maaring membro ng isang gang at then kapag yung mga kagang niya ay may, ay may involved sa isang mapanganib na sitwasyon, pupunta siya sa mga pulis at magbibigay ng information kasi takot siya na baka madamay siya. Then, yung false informant naman, it reveals information of no consequence or value connected with thin air. With thin air. So, madaling salita. So, sa madaling salita, mali ang mga information na ibinibigay niya. Hindi tuma sa nangyayari. Ang purpose naman nito ay para lumabas na siya ay nasa side ng batas at para alisin ang hinala sa kanya ng maka, mga kagang niya. Then yung mercenary informant, nagbibigay siya ng information because of price. So ang mercenary informant ay nagbebenta ng information. Again, ang mercenary informant, nagbibigay ng information because of price. Next, yung woman informant, yan yung kasamahan ng criminals or syndicate. They uses their body charm and beauty to obtain more information. Ito yung pinakadelikadong informant. Kasi, 
ginagamit nila yung kanilang katawan, yung chan nila. Ang ibang types of information. It. Anonymous informant. So, karagdagan, anonymous informant. From the word itself, anonymous, information, but they do not want to be identified. Next, there is rival elimination. There is rival elimination informant. Ang for competition. Nagbibigay sila ng information laban sa kalaban nilang tao o gang. Then another is self-aggrandizing informant. This type of informant moves around the center of criminals, group, or syndicate. So, ito pang types of 26. What do you call the type of witness who must be permitted to tell lies until he is well in mesh consistencies? A. Honest witness. B. Boasting type. C. Timid witness. D. Deceitful witness. Ang sagot dito ay letter D. Deceitful witness or witness or bashful witness is a witness that may be the victim or violent criminal act. Especially sex crimes, no? And unsure of talking to the police. Again, yung timid or bashful witness is a witness that may be the victim, the victim or violent criminal act. Especially sex crimes. Next, honest Witness. It is a person that has information and is willing to give it. So there are witnesses na honest at willing na makipag-cooperate. However, dapat ang investigator sigurado at malinaw sa kanya kung bakit yung witness ay sigurado at malinaw sa kanya kung bakit yung witness ay very cooperative. Na itong witness na to, walang hidden motive, walang ibang boasting type or talkative. This type of witness is not only and willing to cooperate. So, nag enjoy din sila, sila pagdating sa police to look good, brave, or just be a part of the action. Another type of witness, according to their attitude, is disinterested type or no nothing type. So, mahirap silang interviewin dahil wala silang interest. They don't want to get, they don't want to get involved. So, yan yung no nothing type or disinterested type. Next is another example, another type of witness. Suspicious or reluctant type. This type of witness or don't want to get involved for a variety of reasons. Like, takot silang magkaroon ng contact sa mga law enforcement officer o di kaya ay takot na gantihan sila ng suspect. And lastly, yung tinatawag na drunken type. This type of witness nakainom to pero in vino veritas, no? In wine, there is truth. No? In vino, vereta. Sa English, in wine, there is truth. So, next number, 27. What does it indicate when during a duration, the smoke emitted is grayish? A essence of nitrate B, loosely packed substance such as straw and A. C, indicate human substance. D, presence of phosphorus. Ang sagot dito ay letter B. Loosely packed substance such as straw and hay. Or yung tuyong dahon. Pag ang nasusunod naman ay may presence of nitrate, yung color ng smoke. Yellow wish. Yellow wish. Pag humid substance, yung nasusunog na basa, anong color ng smoke? White steam smoke. How about presence of phosphorus? Anong kulay ng smoke? White. 
Okay, I'm not so soon. Ano? How about pag may presence of ang color ng smoke ay biting smoke. So again, pag ang nasusunog, pag humid substance o yung nasusunog na basa, white steam smoke. Pag may presence of phosphorus, color white. Pag may pag petroleum base, rubber or tay ang nasusunog, color black. At pag may presence of chlorine, biting smoke. So, yan yung color of smoke. Number 28. What do you call an act which removes or neutralizes a fire hazard? A. Distillation. B. Allotment. C. Ventilation. D. Abatement. Okay, ang sagot dito ay letter D. Abatement. Ang, ang keyword natin dyan, neutralize or neutralizes a fire hazard. So, ang abatement is fire hazard. Fire fighting operation of removing smoke and heat from the structure. The keyword dyan ay re removing smoke and heat from the structure. By what? By what? By opening windows and doors or making holes or butas in the roof. So, yan yung ventilation. Next number, 29. Element of purpose delicti are Number 1, cadaver of the dead team or evidence of the stolen property. Number 2, additional evidence of a different character at the same point. Number three, proof of occurrence in certain event. Number four, person's capability, person's criminal responsibility of the acts of the acts. So, anong sagot? Again, ang elements ng corpus delicti or ng body of the crime. Ano again, ang corpus delicti, ito yung Proof of occurrence of certain event and person's criminal responsibility of the act. So, ang sagot dito ay D. 3 and 4. Proof of occurrence of a certain event and person's criminal responsibility of the acts. Next, number 30. All the following are facts about confession except. So, maliban sa isa. A, it can be implied. B, it should be direct and positive acknowledgement of guilt. C, confession is voluntary statement, either oral or written. D, it cannot be implied. The correct answer is letter A. It can be sa admission, sa admission po yan, no? Hindi sa confession. Because in confession, it cannot be implied. Implied meaning to express something in indirect way. Kasi sa admission, hindi mo naman direktang inaamin na guilty ka. Inamin mo lang na guilty. Inamin mo lang na nandun ka, pero hindi mo sinabing ikaw ang gumawa. Therefore, admission can be implied. No? While yung confession cannot be implied. So, yan yung kabila. Hindi yan yung facts about confession. Letter A. Number 31. Portrait party is collect correctly defined by which of the following? A. The verbal, accurate, and pictures description of the person identified. B. It is the use of several evidence to or include in choice for identification. C. The use of anthropometrical measurement of human body as the basis for identification. Letter D. It is the file of pictures of missing or wanted person. By the way, what is portrait party, mga amisay? Ano yung portrait party? Okay, yung portrait <clears throat> Sorry. <laughs> yung portrait parley is a French word. 
In English, it means speaking likeness. So, ang correct dito, correct answer, letter A. The verbal, accurate, and pictures description of the person identified. So, yung letter C, the use of anthropometrical measurement of human body as the basis for identification. Anthropometrics po yan. So, who invented anthropometry? Si Alphonse Bertillon. Ang anthropometrics, ang kauna-unahang ginamit as a means of identification bago pa maimbento ang fingerprint. So, nauna ang anthropometrics sa So, yung letter D naman, a file of pictures of missing or wanted person. Roach Gallery ang tawag na. Roach Gallery. R-O-G-E-S. So, merong apat mga misay. Merong apat na methods of identification by witness. Ang ating mnemonics ay PRAG. P-R-A-G. Number one, portrait parlay. Speaking likeness or the verbal description. Then yung number two, road theory. The file of pictures of missing or wanted person. Then number three, artist or cartographic sketch. Ito yung napapanood natin sa TV na ini-sketch yung mukha ng suspect sa pamamagitan lang ng pag-describe ng witness sa itsura ng suspect. Then, pang-apat, yung G, general photograph. Itong general photograph, it's a different pictures na pagsasasamahin para makabuo ng mukha. Merong compilation ng police ng iba't ibang kapal ba? O haba? O parehaba? So, yung sukat ng, yung lahat na itinutok, pro ng witness pagsasamahin nila yon hanggang sa makabuo ng mukha okay yan yung four methods of identification by witness prag p r a g portrait parlay roach gallery cartographic sketch and ang huli general photograph Next, number 32. Suppose you are investigating a crime with so many suspects. Which of the following can help you in identifying the suspect to the crime? A. Confession. B. Motive. C. Associative evidence. D. Circumstantial evidence. Alin daw ang makakatulong para ma-identify kung sino yung specific suspect. Yes. Ano ulit ang associative? It links the suspect to the crime. Example nga yan ay yung fingerprint. Ano purpose ng associative evidence? It, ang purpose is to identify the suspect. Yan yung purpose ng associative evidence. Next, number 33. It is the method of shadowing where the operatives are stationed at a fixed place in assumption that the subject follows the same general road every day. A, combined foot auto surveillance, foot po yan, no? not fixed. B, fixed surveillance. C, frog method. D, AVC method. So, the correct R is letter C, leapfrog method or progressive method. Sa method na ito, napakaliit ng chance na makakuha ng magandang resulta. Bakit? Dahil ang ginagawa ng agent dito, kung saan nila hul huling nakita yung subject, <clears throat> doon sila mag-aabang. Ina-assume nila na yung subject ay doon lagi dadaan kung saan nilang nakita. Then, yung combined foot auto-surveillance. So, merong surveillance on foot and agents in an automobile. Yan yung combined foot auto-surveillance. So, pinagsama.
Okay na? So, yung fix or veil. Okay, ulitin natin. Nawala ulit tayo. Yung fix surveillance, also known as stationary surveillance or stay-out surveillance, dito sa method na to, alam mo na yung location kung saan pupunta yung subject. Sa location kung saan pupunta yung subject, doon nag-aabang ang surveillance. Fix or stationary, ibig sabihin nakapila, inaabangan lang, hindi nila sinusundan. Yan yung fix surveillance. Next, yung ABC method or three-man surveillance reduces the risk of losing the subject. Tatlo kasi. Itong tatlong to, nagpapalitan sila para di makalata yung subject. Kasi nga, ABC method. Una, si A. Then, papalit naman si B. Halimbawa, sa isang kanto, si A o si B. Naman papasok itong si C. So, mas effective. Diba? Before the passing of the anti-rape law of 1997, the crime of rape was then considered then as a crime against chastity. Presently, it is known as a crime against person. Rape by fraudulent vaccinations under RA 8553 can be committed either of the following except. A. Prostitute who has not been paid as agreed. B. Sexual intercourse where the victim is unconscious or otherwise deprived of reason. C. Person in authority who arrests another and having sex with the latter with the promise of release from custody. D. Promise to marry. After passing of RA 8353, person. Napalagay, may tanong sa board. Ganito yung tanong. A person committed the crime of rape as amended. He or is committing ano, the crime of rape as amended. He, she is committing offense or RPC, di ba, felony. Pag-violation ng special penal law, offense. So saan ba nabibila ngayon ang rape? RPC o SPL? SPL. So anong sagot? Offense ba o felony? Felony pa rin. Although na-amend na, na siya, considered pa rin siya as felony. Okay, balik tayo sa ating tanong. Okay, letter A, prostitute who has not been paid as agreed. May panliling lang ba o wala? Meron, nagkaroon na agreement. Pero di binayaran. Next, letter C. Person in authority who arrests another and having sex with the latter with a promise of release from cost to D. May panliling lang o wala? Meron. Pinangakuan na palalayain kapalit ng pakikipag-sex. Next, letter D, promise to marry pa rin. Pero pag pinakasalan, may rape pa ba? Wala na. May extinguish na yung criminal liability. Magkakaroon ng total extinction, extinction of criminal liability. Lumabas ito. Ang answer ay letter B. Lumabas yan sa board exam. November 2019 board exam. Ang keyword natin dyan ay opposite or exit. Yung concentric, same side or entry. Again, pag radial, yung cracks ay makikita saan? Sa opposite side where the bullet exited. Concentric, saan matatagpuan ng cracks? Same side where the bullet entered. So, yan yung pinagkaiba ng concentric and Rachel. Number 36. The part of the body from which the rigor mortis can be detected is in D. Blank. H has B, head, C, legs, D, arms. So, ang sagot dito ay letter C. Legs. 
Pagtadabarik spasm sa arms or hands madidetect. Next number, 37. When marking the specific evidence such as a revolver, the same must mark on D. A. The chamber facing the firing pin as soon as it is open for examination. B. Directly on the frame, boots, cylinder, barrel, and stock. C. A and B is correct. D. Either A and B is correct. So, ang tamang sagot ay letter B. Separately on the frame, but cylinder, barrel, and stock. Next number, sumasagot yung manok. What is the name of the opposite launched by U.S. Navy SEALs that killed Osama Bin Laden? A. Operation Merdeka B. Operation Exodus C. Operation Hieronimo D. Operation Neptune Spear Ang tamang sagot dito mga kami say ay Opland Neptune Spear or Operation Neptune Spear How about the operation launched by PNP sub-commandos that lead to the killing of international terrorists so if live in here? Anong operation plan yun? Oplan Exodus or Operation Exodus. Yung Operation Hieronimo, yung letter C, it is... Next number, 39. In case an slice and be given blank, A. 72 vir angels, B. 72 virgins, C. 70 years old virgin, D. 70 angels. Okay, ang tama sagot dito, letter B. 72 virgins. Isa yan sa mga gift na mga mapupo sa paradise or sa heaven after life. Yan ay para sa mga lalaki na nag-sacrifice ng buhay nila nung nasa lupa pa sila. So, virgin, so ibig sabihin, never pa lang natatouch at saka magaganda sila at wala doon matanda. As in, matanda na kulubot. 72 virgins ang sagot. Okay, next number, 40. What protocol plate designation shall be given to the Chief Justice of the Philippines? A, 1, B, 5, B, 4, D, 3. Okay, ang protocol plate number ng Chief Justice ay 5. Yung isa sa pre yung 1, sa President yan. Then yung 4, sa Speaker of the House Representatives. And yung 3, sa Senate President. And pag 2, yung 1, yan yung protocol plate number sa president, yung two sa vice president, yung three sa senate president, and yung four sa speaker of the house of representatives, and yung five para yan sa chief justice of the Philippines. Next number four. A type of fire which results from the burning of wood, paper textiles, and other carbonaceous materials and the extinguishment of the, this fire is by quenching and cooling. A, class A, B, class B, C, class C, D, class D. Ang tama sagot ay class A. So, ang nasusunod sa class A ay mga ordinary combustible materials such as wood and paper, textiles, and other carbonaceous materials. Ano ang best extinguishing agent ang pwede, pwede sa class A? Water. Okay? Water. Pwede ding all agents like foam, carbon dioxide, and special powder. Sa class B, anong nasusunog dito? Mga flammable liquids such as gasoline, oil, kerosene, paint thinner. Yan. Ang best extinguishing agent naman dito ay foam. Katulad nung AFFF. Pwede rin carbon 
tayo ksay. Katulad ng class A. Pwede rin dito ang all agents. Next, yung class C5. Sunod dyan ay carbon dioxide. I mean, electrical fires caused by overloading. Then, ang best extinguish agent niya ay carbon dioxide or powder. Pag classifier, wag na wag kagamit ng tubig, soda, saka ng foam. Bakit? Kasi magkukos po yan ng electro, electro fusion. Makukuryente kayo. Next is class D. Ano sa sunod naman sa class D. Fire ay mga combustible materials. Katulad ng niche I mean, combustible metals. Class D, ang susunod dyan ay combustible metals, katulad ng magnesium, sodium. Ang best extinguishing agent dito ay special powder. So, dito sa class D, bawal din gamitin ang tubig bilang extinguishing agent. Kasi, kukos ng explosion. So, napaka-delikado. Then, meron pang isa, class E. Ang nasusunod naman dito ay mga flammable gases tulad ng LPG. Yan. Ang pwedeng agents dito ay all agents. All agents ang pwedeng gamitin as extinguishing agent. Okay? Number 22. What country What country is believed to be the origin of mafia and cosa nostra? A Japan, B Italy, C USA, D China. So saan nag-originate? Mafia and cosa nostra. Sa Italy, okay, letter B. Sa Sicily, Italy. Sa Japan naman, diyan nag-originate ang Yakuza or kilala din sa tawag na Boryu Kodan. Then sa China, diyan nag-originate ang Triad. Then sa Taiwan, diyan naman nag-originate yung Bamboo Union Gangs. And sa Hong Kong, diyan naman nag-originate yung 14K Triad. Okay? Again, ang mafia ang cosa nostra ay nag-originate sa Italy. While sa Japan, ang nag-originate dyan ay ang Yakuza. Then sa China, dyan nag-originate ang Triad. And sa Taiwan, dyan nag-originate ang Bamboo Union Gas. And sa Hong Kong, dyan nag-originate ang 14, 14K Triad. By the way, mga amis ha, yung mafia Acronym lang yan. Mafia is the acronym for Morte alla Francia Italia Anela. Again, Morte alla Francia Italia Anela. Ang ibig sabihin niyan ay Italian for death to France, Italy Christ. Again, Italian for death to France, Italy Christ. Next number, Port. What do you call the third largest Yakuza family in Japan with roughly 15,000 members and divided into 313 clans? A. Yamaguchi Gumi B. Inagawa Kai C. Sumiyushi Rengo D. Sumiyushi Kai So, nakala natin ito kanina, no? Ang sagot dito ay letter B. Inagawa Kai So, yung Yamaguchi Gumi Again, yan yung largest family of Yakuza. Then, yung Sumiyushi Rengo, letter C, it is also referring to Sumiyushi Kai. Parehas lang po sila, no? Yan naman yung second largest family of Yakuza. Next, number 44. Which of the following is not a form of relevant material information taken from regular cultivated grapevine sources. A. Physical forms. B. Material forms. C. Written. 
the sensory. So, ang sagot dito ay letter B, material forms. So, merong, la, merong three forms of information ng amisay. So, tandaan nyo, ang mnemonics natin dyan ay SWP or SWAP. Pero without A. S -O -S -W -P, S sensory, W written, and P physical forms. Saan nang galing itong mga information na to? Sa source, sa source nila. Yung RCG, regular, cultivated, or and great band. So, na-discuss na, na, na din natin to kanina. So, ang sensory information mga amisay, from the word itself, is the product of senses. Again, it is the product of senses. Sensory information. So, nakita mo siya, narinig, nahawakan, natikman, naamoy. Yan yung sensory information. Next, written. Reduce into writing. So, ang information, pwede nakasulat. And last, physical form. Tumutukoy naman ito sa physical evidence. Okay? Next number. Number 45. The type of search may be used when the area to be searched is approximately circular or oval. In this search, the searchers gather at the center and simultaneously proceed toward along a radii or spoke. A. Grid method, B. Spiral method, C. Zone search, D. Pi method. So, ang sagot dito, mga amisay, ay letter D. Pi method. Ang keyword natin ay searchers gather at the center and simultaneously proceed toward along a radii or sport. Or searchers gather at the center and proceed outward. So, ganito yan mga amisay. Papakita ko sa inyo each block. Yan. Yan yung pi or wheel method or also known as radial or spoke anim na krag, quadrant. So, nakikita nyo naman. So, para siyang pizza pie. Yun nga lang anim to. Yung pizza pie, walo. So, and then, okay, next na. Yan yung ad There, yan yung ating itsura ng pi or wheel method. <clears throat> Next is yung grid method. Ano itsura ng grid method or double strip method. So, yan yung itsura ng grid method or double strip search method. So, nag-traverse siya first parallel to the base. Ayan, nakita nyo yung star. Then, parallel to a side. So, yan po ang grid search method. This method is useful for a large crime scene, particularly sa outdoor scenes. Again, itong grid method, useful siya for a large crime scene, particularly sa outdoor scenes. Next is yung spiral method. Ayan yung itsura ng spiral search method. Pwedeng Wise at pwede rin counterclockwise. Pwede mag-start sa labas. So, nakikita nyo sa kanan. Papunta sa loob. I mean, sa kaliwa. Pwede mag-start sa labas, papunta sa loob. Then, yung sa kanan, pwede mag-start sa loob, papunta naman sa Labas or counterclockwise. Then yung zone method naman, ayan yung itsura ng zone method. Ang method, tinatawag din siyang quadrant zone, hanapin nyo si quadrant. Pag wala si quadrant, hanapin nyo si Iisa lang sila. Zone, quadrant, at sector search. So nahati siya sa apat. Then, yung kada 
division na hati ulit sa apat. So, yan. Nakikita nyo naman. And next, aside from double strip, spiral, pi, and zone method, may isa pang method of crime scene search. Ito ay ang strip or line search. Ayan yung itsura ng strip or line search method. So, kapareho lamang siya ng double strip. Ang pinagkaiba lang nila, one strip lang yung strip method. Okay? And to maintain the legal integrity of evidence. The evidence must be the maintain its chain of custody. Letter D. Paano kung ganito ang tanong? What must be observed? In order to preserve the preserve, in order to preserve the physical integrity of evidence collected or gathered to the crime scene, for the from the crime scene, must identify. Ang sagot don ay must identify and tag the evidence. So yun yung maintain its chain of custody. Okay, next number forty-seven. In an intersection, not controlled by right of way, the moment he starts to cross, absolutely C, yes, D, no. So, ang answer is letter D. I mean, letter D, absolutely true. So, the moment na yung pedestrian ay nag-cross up sa cross sa crosswalk siya yung may right of way next na Lubiano is a di driver permitted by the government to operate a public utility jeepney which of the following driving privileges he must possess a professional license b sub professional license C, non-professional license. D, professional driver's license. So, ang answer dito ay letter D. Professional driver's license. Ang non-professional driver's license, hindi sila pwede mag-drive na. Yung mga non-professional driver's license holder, hindi sila pwede mag-drive na mabibigat at malalaking sasakyan. Ang pwede lang nilang i-drive ay yung mga sasakyan na may gross weight na 4,500 kg, katulad ng motorsiklo ng tricycle. Samantala, yung professional driver's license holder, pwede sila mag-drive ng mabibigat at malalaking sasakyan. Ito yung may gross weight above 4,500 Kilograms. Pero depende pa rin sa restriction na nakalagay sa license nila. Palala lang po, walang sub-professional driver's license. Bali, tatlo lang yan. Student permits, students permit, professional and non-professional driver's license lang ang meron. Next, number 49. A shoddily crafted police report submitted by the police officers and part of the record in court proceedings at its worst makes D. A. Police report just another court record. B. Police record a basis for scrutiny. Okay, shoddily means hindi maayos or madumi. Ang sagot dyan ay letter A. Police report, just another court record. Okay, bago tayo mag-proceed sa number 3, again, announcement. Sa June 25 and June 26, 2 p.m., mag-lecture Enrique Agtarap, ang tunay na panday. Sa Leia po, okay? Then every day, may quiz tayo sa Leia, Sunday until June 25. 30. Then sa July 2, magaganap ang board extra exam trial sa Leia. And irarasyo yan ni Airport Police Officer 1, John Aldrin Mayaw, sa July 
three. Okay? Next, number 50. Number 50. The entire width between boundary lines of every way or place of which any part is open to the use of the public or purposes of vehicular traffic as a matter of right or custom. As a matter of right or custom. A traffic units, B road, way, C traffic way, D subway. So, ang tamang sagot dyan ay traffic way, also known as highway. Ang keyword natin dyan ay entire width and open, open to the use of public. So, dyan na po nagtatapos ang at, part ng ating live video. So, lunch break lang tayo mamaya. Iku-continue natin yung ating ratio, numbers 51 to 100. At 2 p.m. Okay? Samahan niyo ako mamaya. Oh, sorry. Okay, again, mga, mga amisay, um, ikukontinue natin ang rationalization natin mamaya. 2 p.m. Numbers 51 to 100. So, samahan nyo ulit ako mamaya, mga amisay, no? And again, this is Jinky Mazo at nag ako ng isang paalala, ng isang paalala na walang imposible sa taong matyaga, okay? Thank you for staying with me and God bless. See you later and eat well, mga amisay. Bye-bye!